On today's episode, we're talking about Kaisenet's seven-day prison stream, Nintendo's new handheld, Gears of War reboot, and Xbox sticking it to the fans. All this and more right now on FTW for the win, episode 19. Kai Sinet is doing a seven-day prison stream, amassing 250,000 viewers on day one. Kai Sinet, one of Twitch's most popular content creators, is in the middle of a seven-day prison live stream. The streamer is currently locked up in a jail setting while having to follow the rules of wardens and guards alongside a few other content creators <laughs> and famous names. Content creators and gamers and streamers are just taking things to the next level. He's live right now, by the way. So, so I got to know really, really quick. Yeah. Are the guards guards or are other streamers being the guards? Uh, one of the guards was a uh, female streamer that was really popular and all the guys were pumped that she was one of the <laughs> one of the guards. <laughs> This uh, can turn okay. into the uh, the Stanford Prison Experiment real quick and fast. Like, well, there was a lot of I'm very familiar. There was a lot of comments actually about the Stanford Prison Experiment. However, I think this is a little different. I don't think it's quite as intense. I remember reading and watching the stuff about the Stanford Prison Experiment. Were they how? Were they, if so, how much were they getting paid to do it? The Stanford guys, do we remember? Uh, it was in the 70s, so we would have to adjust for inflation and everything, too, if they did get paid. Um, I think it might have been volunteer or was, like, something pretty minuscule, like, yeah, do this, and, like, probably the equivalent of, like, 20 bucks today, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, from what I can tell and what I've watched, it's um, quite a bit different in that it's just very laid back and they're just in a warehouse that looks like a prison and oh, yeah gotcha. they're well. they're stuck in the same place but they're not getting the level of abuse <laughs> and the level of strictness i mean they're just right. hanging out it's just like oh here's the schedule you can eat I just, I just we're gonna hang out we're gonna freestyle together you know it's very it laid be... back it would be the equivalent of get paid one hundred and eight dollars today. They're paid fifteen dollars a day. Oh, geez, fifteen dollars yeah. each a day. But you know, like when you're like a broke college kid, you know, yeah, because that's what it was. But uh, I th didn't it only last like it only lasts like four days. Yeah, they broke so, them. That was crazy. Yeah, this is quite because, the opposite. Yeah. All right. They're like freestyling. And like eating junk food and just like <laughs> hanging out. So, anyways, okay. Are cool. they making prison food? Prison food's really interesting to do. Like, like making uh, just the, the weird crap you could, people make in their cells. Like, I watched this dude on YouTube. He was in prison for like twelve years, and he makes like. It's like, this is how you make prison nachos. <laughs> <laughs> it's really gross because they move their mattress out of the way and they like on the metal bed, they use that as like a griddle. <laughs> they like put a flame <laughs> under it. <laughs> They've done stuff like that. There's like, the thing that's the sketchiest and what they, they call the stinger and they get like a uh, they get a piece of metal and then they get um just a power cord and they split the power cord. They connected the piece of metal and that's how they boil water. They just take this oh, thing, yeah. put it in the water, plug it in. And it's like, so you can literally die. If you like plug that in, it's just, it's just shorting out. And that's what's boiling the damn water. So and like, crazy. I'm sure you can, I'm sure you're getting some kind of like, depending on what kind of metal you're using to you get some kind of disease. I don't know. Ugh. It's uh, it's Ugh. super sketchy. Super sketchy. 
Ugh. Yeah. Would you guys, uh, if you were getting paid, would you go and do a seven day prison live stream? Okay, but it depends on what. Who, are we going to this thing where it's a party? Or are we going to like the Stanford Prison Experiment? This thing, this thing, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, I was in the Air Force. Like, basic training was basically prison. So, yeah, you could handle it. You'd probably get paid more too. It's true. Nintendo filing reveals design for the new dual screen gaming device. The filing shows a dual screen gaming device that can be split into two. This filing was made in November of last year, but was made public earlier this month. Images of this device show a handheld not too dissimilar from the Nintendo 3DS, but unlike the 3DS, this device can be split in half to allow for wireless gaming between between two players. Hmm. Nintendo once again pushing the boundaries of what can be done. Just looking at the patent, it reminded me of like the notebook, the the my laptop I have for work. I have a mm-hmm. surface book and like the top can like detach, flip around, clip it back on, fold it over. It'd be interesting if it's stuff like that, if you can like manipulate in different ways, you know? Yeah, they tried to do this kind of with the Switch. I don't even know. Do people play a lot of Switch games together? I remember when the Switch first came out, it was very heavily advertised as a, hey, like, you know, sit at, party a, kind of yes, sit at a picnic bench across from your buddy and, you know, play back and forth. But I feel like that... I that never really became the reality of switch so, users. Am I, I mean, often remembering that? They no, advertise so it. I, quite they heavily. advertise it heavily. Um, and I did use it, that feature when I worked at Best Buy and I would bring my switch and I'd be in the break room and I other tech techie coworker and friends, they would mm. pull out theirs and we would sometimes play games together but it was also same kind of a pain in the butt to set up, and can, sometimes it wasn't the super seamless. Uh, yeah. But that could have just been the specific games we were playing. Um, so we didn't really use it that much. Like what we mostly would end up doing was putting one person switch up on a kickstand, excuse me, and playing a game where we're sharing a screen, like Wind Jammers or mm. uh, Tower Fall or some other game like that, you know, and. Uh, just connecting our controllers to to the other switch. That's what yeah. we ended up doing for the most part. It was much less of a hassle, yeah. but still a definite hassle because the switch has a horrible UI for adding and removing controllers. It's a damn nightmare. Yeah, I'm interested uh, in how they're like. I don't know powering powering it, like with like the like surface like one the detachable part is just a keyboard and it like connects but like are you powering like two screens and like when you plug it in is it charging both at the same time like yeah just... so that's actually what that's what so i'm not talk my i don't have a surface i have a surface book and the surface book actually has two batteries so okay, my surface batteries. i have to push a button and then windows says I can detach the screen and I, then it finally unlatches. It's not like the, the normal surface where it's like a Bluetooth keyboard. That's a case. This is an yeah. actual like latching connection um, thing. And uh, it charges two different batteries when I put my power cord in because like when it, it tells me like battery one is at you know, 75% and battery two is at 80% um, because they can be different. If I like, I'm using it in like tablet mode or whatever the heck. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Is it smart to release a handheld that now requires two batteries when batteries and chips are <laughs> becoming a hot topic? They're going to be have to be replaceable. Oof. That is. Do you a- uh, pull the old Sega Game Gear? Do six AA batteries? Oh my gosh, yeah. Just give it First a hydrogen screen. cell, call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, like, talk, <laughs> talking, do you remember in Small Soldiers when they were talking about, like, putting lithium batteries so, like, they'll last until, like, you know, 
the new next millennia and like <laughs> i haven't seen uh, small soldiers in years and in like 1998 yeah a lithium battery that was pretty new we were still doing nickel metal hydride and and stuff back then um so i don't know maybe maybe something else is i don't, I don't know how how to explain it like we yeah. could could be moving on to something i don't know i don't know if it's a smart idea it's nintendo doing what nintendo does they never <laughs> pay attention to what anyone else is saying like they just just do yeah. nintendo things oh man are we getting to the other nintendo hot topic later or which which one there are uh, new guidelines for for Smash Bros tournaments. Nice. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put that in. Can Nintendo yeah. just f yeah. off with that. Like, let tournaments just happen, man. Like, fuck. it's crazy. Know. Like, you have to get a license if there's more than two hundred entrants. Yeah, and the prize money can't be more than like. Like five thousand dollars. Sometimes I kind of like... wish that like video game turns were still like something that companies didn't really pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, because there's even stuff like it has to be run as a nonprofit, and you can't even sell like concessions, like food and drinks. Like they went like way beyond anything they've ever done before because they've always been like really stupid about their tournaments and stuff. And so it basically kills a lot of like the smaller and like locals and and it's like what what's like what's the point of all of this? Like all it is is like bad publicity for Nintendo. Like, what is the point of all of this? Like, I know they want to try to control their brand and keep complete ownership of their brand and con and control the narrative around it. But like, this doesn't matter in that regard. Like, yeah, you know, it's stupid. It's a long. You just wouldn't like. They've had a long history of not being good, especially with the Smash community, and now it's just like they are making it even worse but uh yeah gears of war creator cliffy b says he would love to see the game rebooted in a recent interview at comicbook.com cliff says he thinks that gears of war needs a god of war like reboot and that he would be interested in consulting such a project Quote, I believe Gears needs a little bit of a reboot, like God of War had. I've always said, Phil Spencer has my number. I'm happy to consult. Gears will always be near and dear to my heart. Late afternoon, if I have a mimosa in me, sometimes I'll go to YouTube and I'll look up key cutscenes from the Gears franchise, like Dom's death or Dom having to put down his wife, and I read the comments. Mm. He says, reading the comments on those cutscenes from Gears of War when Dom dies... And people are like, I had to put the controller down. My friend just sat there and we were silenced and stunned. He said, for people to actually get tattoos of something that you made on their bodies is the most flattering thing. I would be all down for this. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll never forget seeing Gears of Three, uh, Gears of War, the trailer at E3. And like, it literally just like blew my mind. And I don't know, Dave, if you remember, but like I was literally just like running through the house, slamming my back against the couch and like shooting over <laughs> the couch and then going around cover and just running, doing the roadie run like all oh, yeah. around the house. Like I was so hyped for that game. And, uh, you know, I didn't I played through the original trilogy first three and I didn't really get into four or five. Um but apparently, like, 5 was still pretty well-received, and it sold better than 4 did. So, like, I, there's still, like, an audience, I think, here for the Gears franchise. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly how you would, like, do a soft reboot. Um, I mean, I guess they keep figuring out ways to bring back, like, the Locust armies and stuff like that to kill. But, um, yeah. I almost think you need to do like a, I don't know, like a 
parallel universe or another planet or you know something something like that um so how about uh, how about we do a multiverse right <laughs> and always multiverse and, is always and, the answer and all of them are diverse women Right. <laughs> we could do a pandaverse. Like every single make one them of them gay is a diverse and make one. them lame. Lame. And make them make them gay and make them lame. And yeah, that's that's how we could all Did the locusts also lame. All the locusts are also diverse women that are gay and lame. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. It'll Dude. print money. It'll and... print money. Prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yes but would, gears in the same way gears does have that special place in my heart just because just had so much fun with it back yeah. in the day even and, landing it i remember landing it a few times and enjoying the heck out of it yeah we did like just just horde mode over land mm -hmm. and that was like really fun yeah, I just remember like how much like that. I would say Gears One was the first time a 360 title properly felt next gen. Yes, a hundred percent. I mean, coming close to be Dead Rising, um, just because of how much shit there was on screen, how many like enemies and stuff there were. Yeah, um, I remember Dead Rising was the first game on the 360 where it really drove home the point this is an HD console because people were complaining the text was unreadable on a CRT. <laughs> it's too small. Mm, I remember um, that. <laughs> so, which is make, which checks out because I for, well, first time I played Dead Rising was on a CRT at Kyle's house. So it like one hundred percent adds up in my my personal experiences with it. But um, Gears One was like I was like okay this is this is the next gen. This it's here. It. Yeah, still haven't really seen one for the series ps5 gen but yeah yeah i would love to see this happen and even if they did something as simple as a mcc type situation where they put one through five together with the campaigns with new achievements with some simple matchmaking servers and they didn't make them suck like mcc like MCC, as long as it's not broken like MCC was in the beginning, but a polished uh, Gears of War uh, Mega Ultimate Edition, whatever, I would snatch that up quickly and have a lot of fun with it. Have Horde mode for the different ones, make it so you can play with your friends. That would be that'd be incredible. And I think you'd get a lot of, I mean, people love that game, man. People love it. And yeah. a lot of people would, would play it. I, I have a vivid memory of playing the campaign and like watching Carmine die. And he was like my favorite character. I thought he was so cool. <laughs> Dude, and I was like, I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. But like you think like I'm just going to read off these characters. Right. And each one of them I went through. I'm like, Dude, they like resonate with me. So you got Marcus Phoenix. You got Cole. You got Santiago, yeah. you got Carmine, right? Like it's a game that like they did characters and stories so well, and yeah, uh, just it's the like, fact that you can remember character names and like their personalities and yeah, stuff tells yeah, you like totally. they did a good job with the right. game, like in the story and the characters. Because right, it's not a lot of games where I can just list off like every main character in it when there's like five, six main characters, you know, it's like, yeah. But... Yeah. It's like what Halo five wanted to be, but couldn't be. Cause I couldn't tell you anyone in Halo five, except for that. The one main antagonist guy, whatever his name was, who, you know, fought the chief or whatever the heck. Anyways, yeah. reboot. It'd be great. I'd be down. Okay, I have feelings about this. Uh, Xbox is going to block all unauthorized third-party accessories. Xbox is reportedly about to block players from using any, quote, unauthorized third-party accessories as of the 12th of November. 
Members of Xbox community have reported seeing a warning message pop up on screen when they plug in an unauthorized accessory to their consoles. Microsoft has shared the following statement. Microsoft and other licensed Xbox hardware partners' accessories are designed and manufactured with quality standards for performance, security, and safety. Unauthorized accessories can compromise the gaming experience on Xbox consoles. Gamers may receive a pop-up warning that their <coughs> accessory is unauthorized. Eventually, the unauthorized accessory will be blocked from use to preserve the console gaming experience. I was torn on this at first, but I'm not anymore. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> so, um, obviously, it's to mitigate cheaters, right? People that have modded controllers and stuff like that. And at the same time, um, I if this was last gen, I or or the gen before that, actually, I would be pretty livid about it because I think about people that have uh, controllers that have been modified for disabilities and handicaps and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's, there's a whole market for that. But at the same time, Microsoft for like the last three, four years have been really, really driving home their adaptive controller right, where you buy right. the main hub and you can make whatever. Yep. And I know people that use the adaptive controller they have no handicaps, but they have like created like little foot pads to like crouch so they can like crouch slide and stuff like that mm -hmm. with like just pedals on their or and various other things. Um, so I feel that if you're creative enough to do modded controllers, you can figure something out with the adaptive controller that will still work in your favor, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh, off the top of my head if that's possible, like how much of that's possible, how wh how Microsoft is detecting these sort of things. Like, like if I make a button, if I make my own version of like the Elite controller by just adding four more mappable buttons at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Without any other like weird cheating kind of situations, will that be detected? I don't know how far this goes as far as like mm -hmm. them detecting unauthorized yeah yeah like i get a good idea of what is allowed you know if it has that little emblem designed for xbox but i'm curious like what actual like products that you can buy is this actually going to affect and are not going to work you know if any um because mm -hmm. i think i saw one guy's product that lets you you know plug in a mouse and keyboard um like won't be available, but I think there's legitimate ways to plug in a mouse and keyboard, just not with his specific product. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, it doesn't seem like it's going to affect anything that you can just like buy in a GameStop or at a store or something. It seems. So to be it, it's, it's it also blocks third party stuff that doesn't have like Microsoft's like chipset for a digital handshake essentially. So when I worked at Best Buy, we sold a thing that you just plugged into the back of your controller, and it wasn't authorized by Microsoft, but you plugged into the battery pack, and it allowed you to start doing like drop shots and stuff in Call of Duty. Um, and it would essentially turn your normal controller to a modded controller. Uh, I think that would probably get flagged. Uh, because, it was, but you could just buy it at it, GameStop sold it too. I forget what it was called, but mm. um, yeah, it's. I think what would end up happening is that retailers, like mainstream retailers, Walmart, Target, GameStop, uh, Best Buy, they would probably start focusing on only cover, only selling third party products that have that official certification from Microsoft, you know, mm -hmm. um, just so they can most so they can cut down on returns. Uh, so I don't know. It's yeah. I mean, the competitor in me wants everyone to be using just the exact same controller, but I understand there's a lot of money to be made on accessories and different controller types and, all of that. I wonder if it's going to yeah. start bl blocking like people's like scuff controllers. So like, think about that. that's a huge there's, company. There's a list, and scuff is a like Microsoft partner. So the big oh, they, the, okay. 
the big names are going to be fine. You know, like I'm 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 on the website right now. Scuff was like ran out of like a guy's garage essentially when it started, you know? Yeah, so no, they're they're it's crazy that now they're authorized. Wow. I'm at the website right now. Scuff Instinct controller is it's on the approved list and everything. However, I have two main beefs with this. Like the positive is, yeah, the cheating and all that, obviously. We want to like none of that. I don't want that. Like I hated this second Halo came to PC. All of a sudden cheating was like running rampant right so i like the idea of like people not being able to use whatever weird modified stuff however my first thought when i read this article i was like but what about little jimmy whose grandma or parents pick him up a you know a mad cats you know super controller x for 20 bucks because that's the cheapest that like that's what they can get that's what they can afford they can't afford a 70 dollar microsoft official controller and then they go to plug it in it's like dang it's not on the approved list and this kid who's in fifth grade can't play and they gotta buy so that was my first thought and i'm looking on the list and there are some like there's a hyper x 34 dollar xbox controller you know, that's like, yeah, pretty. That's like not unreasonable. Um, and so I my first thought was just, man, I would hate to see this because I remember growing up playing video games and people would have the dodgiest controller sometimes. And you're like, dude, what is that like third party knockoff, whatever. But it's what people had and it's what they could play with. And so that's my first thought is I want it to be accessible to like kids. I think about kids and like people who hey, all they can do is, like, go and get the cheapest thing they can get. Like, their parents are yeah. already spending a butt ton on a console, and they can't do all this stuff. My second thing, though, and this is a much even bigger beef, is I paid for this Xbox. I paid full price for this game. I paid for uh, all of this, and now you won't let me use, like, my own controller on it. I'm not even, like, using some sketchy thing to modify something or play the game and cheat and hack it's like you just won't even let me play with my own controller on my own console that i own and paid for i and mean it, i get that entirely like why that's a fr why it's frustrating considering like you guys remember back like 20 years ago i was like hacking controllers to like make my own arcade sticks i was mm -hmm. buying like real arcade hardware like soldering directly to like third party controllers um but like uh you know it's it's i understand that frustration but what this is also going to do to to your first point you made david is this is going to kill the market for dodgy control like the extra dodgy controllers because sure. the, pa the power a ones. makes power a makes a, a authorized xbox Three, uh, one uh, Xbox Series controller for twenty dollars. Power Ray makes one. It's twenty dollars. Like, and I don't think you can find like a Chinese knockoff that has no authorization for tw for for cheaper than twenty dollars. In all mm -hmm. honesty, right? So this is going to eliminate the dodgiest of the dodgy controllers because any ma retailer that no that doesn't want to deal with returns is going to not carry weird dodgy controllers from you know no name brand right and so mainstream retailers won't, won't carry them and at the same time if if weird companies like dodgy companies can't get retailers to carry them because they just get returned they're gonna mm. not make them you know so it's uh it will eliminate that while still allowing that first thing you had mentioned about like you know people that had the crappy third-party controllers they're, they're still out there and they and microsoft slaps their name on it because they could get their royalty from it so yeah i just can't imagine buying like a car and then being like "Ooh, i want these different rims on it and then they're like nope can't use these rims on our car what do you um, mean i paid yeah, full price that... cash for this car i can use whatever was... the heck rims on it i want there was Don't talks about that happening with the yeah. with the Tesla Cybertruck. Um, uh, no, 
And Wait, the rims? To, we get to Eve. About that, yeah, the 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 rims and tires of it was like. Well, I, there's already there's already cars sold now, like the Mercedes EV. That literally, yeah. you you buy the car, and then there's stuff that is just like locked by software, like features yeah, in the B- car. BMW and Not Mercedes like, did it. Oh but, yeah, yeah. The hardware oh, yeah. is there to like seat to warm your it's seat, but you got to pay. But you but pay like, extra. Yeah, you have to pay like subscription to unlock it, and then. Yeah. And then we can go down the rabbit hole, David, of like what John Deere is doing about how like <laughs> John, it, oh, over John, John Deere, Deere yeah. they, there's a whole thing where like farmers are having to turn to cracked Russian firmware for their tractors because Jeez. they can't modify and keep them up and running because there's like stupid licensing, two way handshake bull crap always online horse shit that like for John Deere's been doing for tractors. Yeah, this isn't uh, new, David. Your analogy. No. Oh, buddy. No. But here, <laughs> You're, we're there. But Welcome to your thing. dystopia. Here's what's crazy is like you, you know, you like with the car, it's like, oh, pay extra to unlock it, right? Well, I have paid extra and I have paid for everything for this Xbox. And so oh, I saying. should like, be able to use everything. Tesla was going to do that with the Cybertruck where you have to buy the Cybertruck tires. You can't put other things on there it's yeah it's already yeah, yeah. no i like, i hear you i i just i uh i think it's a, just a very hard pill to swallow from someone who like literally grew up being able to plug in whatever i want to the console i own full stop like i'm just sick and tired of these like companies being inside my house and controlling everything that I paid money for. You know what I mean? Like, I paid money for this. Why are you controlling how I use it? It wouldn't be an issue if you didn't have to be online to do everything on the console, you know? Yeah. Because everything we used to do is all offline. You can just plug in whatever. There's no way of them to know anything. I, I foresee what I foresee as a cat and mouse game, as it always turns into... Um, there was an issue like this with the 360 with people using, um, when, early on when people were making, uh, their own custom arcade sticks before Mad Cats had released the like fight stick before Street Fighter four, which is why, um, even though it was harder to do, I used an official wired Xbox 360 controller for like, I don't, do you remember my power ranger, my red ranger, um, arcade stick I made mm. like back yeah. then? I used an original Xbox 360 controller, even though it was harder to do because there was a chipset on there uh, that allowed it to always work, versus like people were running into issues with dodgy Chinese controllers, uh, and it was not being recognized um, for for the same reason. It's this isn't exactly new. This is just mm-hmm. what now Microsoft's like advertising and giving you a list. Like they've do done s- this sort of thing before. Do you still have that arcade stick? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I still have my other arcade sticks I made. Oh my god! Like literally over twenty years ago now. <laughs> like, <laughs> golly. Ooh, I will say this is something old, that, guys. like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is something that could push me. You know, if this goes to the extreme and they keep just like regulating everything about a console that you paid five hundred dollars for and requiring all this stuff and like shaping your experience to a T this is something that could definitely push me towards PC gaming where it's more like, Hey, do what you want to do. And, uh, I just play old games now, man. That's all I do. Really? I just mostly play old crap. It's not even even playing competitively online anymore with all the cheaters and the, the matchmaking. And it's just like, yep. Yeah. I'll do, I'll run customs with people or do lands, but, it's really hard for me to like have any motivation to play stuff competitive. Online that's anymore. that's the thing. Like, I just don't care anymore. Like, I just don't care. Like about winning, about striving to win. It's just like whatever, dude. Like, like yeah. especially like with games like Halo Infinite. It's not the only one, but we talked about it before. Where like it's predetermined. Like they have it mathematically mapped out. Where like we know this guy is gonna get creamed. After yeah. playing against these guys, so mm-hmm. like, yeah. like what I don't even I get doing? mad anymore. It's like, 
I don't get mad about it, but I also don't feel good about winning because it's like, did they just pair me against a bunch of dudes that are like playing with their controller up their butt? Like, I, yep. I don't, I don't know. Bring back the land party. I wish, I wish Infinite Customs worked. Like, that would be fun. <laughs> Like to right. play customs, dude. The customs game browser work. is a disaster. Still, still. Anyways, wait till I get to my soapbox. Nick Merckx <laughs> signs a new deal with Kick and leaves Twitch. Nick Merckx has uh, alleged that Twitch used to take his subscription revenue and pay him a fixed amount at the end of each month for the longest time. In the same stream, he also revealed that he has a gambling contract with Kick. And he will also be doing some uh, gambling on his new channel at the Stakeback platform. He, quote, for a long time now, I don't know how you're going to feel about me telling you this, but I'm just going to tell you, I didn't see any of that. I got paid a fixed amount no matter what. You know what I mean? So he's going over to kick. Some people are up in arms about him doing, uh, He like he has to do a few gambling streams. It's part of his contract or whatever. And I'm like, dude, like, he's not a Roblox streamer. He's he's not a Minecraft streamer. He doesn't stream to little kids. I've been watching him for years. His brand is like grown men, football meatheads. You know what I mean? Like guys who work out and like, who cares? Yeah. People are trying to like cast like judgment on him. I'm like, dude, like, OK, whatever. Like, I don't know, dude. I mean, I'm a pretty... uh you know, I'm a person who tries to be careful about what I do online and have upstanding morals. But if Kick was like, hey, we'll pay you two million dollars <laughs> if you do a couple gambling <laughs> streams, you know, a month, I'd be like, yeah, I'll take care of my family and friends. Like, it's not I don't know. He yeah. people who are trying to take some moral st high ground stance are acting now if he was like. A Roblox streamer and his demographic was like elementary to middle school kids. I might be like, yeah, that's a little. I mean, come on, man. Like, that's not quite. Kids can great. learn how to gamble, man. They have <laughs> slot. No, they have slot <laughs> machines in Pokemon Red and Blue. Oh, dude! And then every game is a slot they're... machine now. And oh. yeah, every game's a slot every machine. Every time now. they walk out their front door, they're taking a gamble. <laughs> it's true. Going to school to gamble now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's back it so, up. Back it Pokemon. Up. <laughs> Pokemon had Pokemon. slot machines. Pokemon okay. cards. It's all fun. There was Woo! there was literally like casino games on the SNES and the PS One. All right. Oh, yeah, so like dude. Shem knew I was so, always in there just pulling the slots. Yeah, playing a game of Lucky Shem Hit. Knew. Lucky like, Hit. Like to bro. play a game of Lucky Hit. <laughs> so. OK, like they're not betting real money. It's yeah. fine. Teach a kid how to play. Like, yeah. like what is yeah. like what? What harm is it? What harm <laughs> yeah. is it? Let them run out of money so they can't buy any more Ultra Balls and they can't catch any Pokemon. You got to let them learn from their mistakes. <laughs> and You can't interrupt the rule of sowing and reaping. Yeah. Like, like I remember <laughs> James Bond on game boy actually had like a mode to play like um to play poker and blackjack and stuff mm. and uh there was a cheat code where you could just skip to just that part like yes <laughs> you, straight you to gamble skip going to the casino <laughs> yeah you could like i think you just had to like name your character something else and it would just immediately like, take it to like the the developers obviously put a lot of time and effort into the uh, casino portion <laughs> of the game. And they're like, yeah, we'll put a cheat code. You can just skip right to that. Skip all the, like, exposition crap. It's yeah. a Game Boy game. So, I yeah. mean, like, what's... what's kids, kids, kids can gamble. It's fine. I don't care. I'm not dad. <laughs> well, when I saw this headline, I was just like, holy crap. Like, I want to see Kick's books. Like, do they just have, like, bottomless pockets and can just poach yeah. every huge streamer ever like when when is it going to end like how are they making so much money well they're backed by stake which is a massive online gambling sports gambling you know company so they got you know like their casino you know they got money for days 
But uh, it. What do you guys think about uh, him getting? So the whole time he was partnered with Twitch, he probably wasn't allowed to say. But all his sub money, whenever someone subbed to his channel, and the people who had you know fifty two month streaks, a hundred month streaks, he didn't see. Like technically, that money didn't go to him. It went to Twitch. He didn't get anything off his dashboard is the wording that he used. And they just guarantee the deal was they guaranteed him a minimum and he didn't get anything off his dashboard. I would feel like kind of like crap if I found that out after being subbed to someone for like a long time. I get how it's like, well, technically it does go to him if you see it as like, oh, it went to Twitch and then Twitch gives him a minimum. Like you could see it is still supporting him, but that feels weird. I want to see Twitch's books too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so curious. I mean, they're backed by Amazon, so it just doesn't make sense that something backed by Amazon would need to be so like anti creatives, but. I just did a quick search, and it looks like in 2022, stake.com had a revenue of about $2.6 billion. Yeah. So I think that's more than enough to pay Nick Marks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The rumor going around there is the rumor going around, which I don't I haven't looked super into it, but it's 10, a 10 million deal. He gets everything off of his dashboards, like subs, donations, etc. And they are going to help him out. He does a few big events a year, and I think they're going to front the cash and pay for those. Like he does a big like family day where uh, subs and their families and everything can come out and hang out. And he does like some partnerships. So. Yeah, man, like, dude, I would take a deal in a second. Like, yeah, I think it's always great seeing like actual and he's a gamer, you know, like he's a real gamer streamer. He's not one of these. Uh, I won't name drop, but like guys who just sits there and watch YouTube all day and just like says a few sentences and just does reacts the whole time. Like, no, he's like playing video games. He's built a really great community, so. I think it's always good when uh, kind of the real uh, gamers get the deal. So it's a W. Yeah. You know what's not a W, though? The layoffs continuing. Bungie, did just this week, uh, lays off around 100 staff. Its revenue is 45% below 2023 projection. Executives at Bungie told employees two weeks ago, Destiny 2 was running some 45% below revenue projections for the year following a disappointment or sorry, disappointing reception to the expansion Lightfall. Dozens of employees woke up to ominous 15 minute meetings scheduled for Monday morning where they learned their positions were affected. Jeez. And the legend himself, uh, Mike Salvatore, Halo composer, after 25 years, I think it was, got the axe. And Dude, there's people that were there since the beginning of Bungie that are being... That are being, being let go. Yeah. Insane. The girl who... I forget her name. Uh, the biggest thing, that one that stuck out to me was uh, the person who designed the damn Halo logo. Right, yeah. Gone. yeah. Dude. That's, that's nuts. crazy. And to add... There's a lot of layers to this, but one of them, to add uh, salt in the wound, it came out um, through employees that were there when they had like an all-team meeting with who was left. It came out that the CEO uh, or whoever it was in charge was talking to everyone and said that they feel that they've kept the, quote, the right people to move destiny forward and mm -hmm. just the worst way you could possibly say that. I think I understand what they mean is like, Hey, we, this is we making cuts sucks and laying off people sucks. This is the best. This is what we feel is, is the best team that we can afford to move this thing forward. But 
what it says, what the message that is communicated is actually everyone we just laid off were not the right people, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. Well, it's also really crazy is that like they were t- people that knew they were told to not tell the other people because they're like, it will be properly handled and the information will be disseminated. And then instead mm-hmm. people weren't even like being, so a lot of people weren't even being told they were just email access deleted, couldn't connect to the VPN. They couldn't get to work. They couldn't connect to online to anything. And then mm-hmm. it was like, Oh yeah, no, you're uh you're gone. Yeah. Like, To get sacked like that is insane. I thought it sucked when I got, like, a call on vacation telling me my position was eliminated. Being, like, just, like, essentially ghosted. That's horrifying. Yeah, well, I've I've also seen that um, fans in protests are mass refunding their pre-orders for Lightfall. So it's only going to get worse from here for Bungie. Yeah, we could. I don't know, dude. Could we see Bungie like go under forty five percent below revenue projections? Is crazy. That's you know massive. You know what? You know, if I was three four three, I would be doing a hiring spree mm. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, all the best to people who got laid off, especially uh, the legendary Halo composer. That uh, sucks. On his page, yeah. it on his website, it no longer says his in his bio all his Destiny projects. Everything's been deleted, and it just says "gone fishing" with a smiley face. Jeez. So, so it looks like uh, the expansion and. Marathon are going to be delayed too. Oh, they would have to be L- like losing all those people. And... Yeah, it's just brutal, man. Grim. Yeah, grim, grim, grim. Max Payne remake project is next in line for release, and it has supposedly quote progressed into the production readiness stage. So, uh, the full quote says we've gained clarity on the style and scope of game and we have an exceptionally well organized team working on it with these accomplishments we are excited about the project and its future success so yeah max Payne one plus two is underway and they got a good team working on it and that's music to my ears I know you replayed the first one recently. Did you ever play the second one again? No, I haven't done the second one yet. Hmm. So. Yep. I have very fond memories of the first Max Payne. It's one of the first, first Xbox games I convinced my dad to buy from Walmart. Mm. Yeah. Pretty dark as well. <laughs> Pretty dark. A lot of drug use. The drug, the drug use in it is quite intense, even for an old game. Yeah, and uh, he was hesitant to buy it because on the back there was a neon sign XXX, and he was like, "Wait, what's this?" And I was like, (laughs) "No, no, no! Look, look at the rating. It just says violence and language. There's no, there's no nudity or anything. There's no XXX in it." It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's oh. called world building, Dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> world building. But I, I love, I love those games. I never played the third one though. It kind of cut. I don't know. It came out at a weird time in my life. I think. Mm. But one and two were were awesome. Yeah, I definitely gotta, I gotta play two gotta play it gotta play it all right it's time for the 60 second soapbox i am sick and tired of 343 slash halo infinite gaming grassroots partners trying to convince me why i should be excited and play halo infinite all i'm seeing nowadays 
is all these grassroots partners saying, oh, this is a massive, this update's a massive W for Infinite. All this game does is catch Ws. Ws everywhere. Ws all around. Oh, this game is so much Ws. And I just want to know, how many years do we have to give a game before we just say, hey, we just didn't quite hit the mark with this one. I am not down with like taking a hundred steps back, 10 steps forward, and then saying those 10 steps forward are a massive W. It's a massive W. That's where we're at with Halo Infinite. They took a hundred steps back and they've gone about, oh, I don't know, I'd say 50 steps forward. And so I'm not about it. And I'm not gonna sit here and, you know, tear them down every single week. But I remember like, a few months back when gas prices shot up two dollars overnight and then the president came out a month later after <laughs> gas prices went down about 10 cents and said gas prices are going down we're moving the economy forward i'm like no 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 <laughs> we still got to get back down to where we were what just happened and so that's how it is with infinite it's like yeah good progress but no we're not where we should be and what like I'm not going to sit here and applaud you for every single little update. Desync still exists two years later when you released a blog. And I looked it up. You released a blog, like one of the first waypoints. Hey, we know desync is an issue. Be, be looking in future updates. We're going to address it. <coughs> they still haven't addressed it two years later. I'm, I'm out, dude. I'm not going to sit here and post things on social media that was more than two minutes i'm sorry or so that was more than one minute that's my that's my rant that's i'm i'm over it bro the question is how much are they getting paid to to shill for for three for three yeah i don't i don't think they are getting paid i don't think but so they, i think they, they gotta just be have getting some benefits. kind of perk or yeah they get perks benefits something. The shilling is just, I can't, I can't take it anymore. Like, I just can't. Diablo 4 new expansion gets data mined. Diablo 4's first major expansion will be called Lord of Hatred and focus on prime evil Mephisto, according to data miners, who have tapped into Blizzard's technical alpha build of version 2.0 on its private testing branch. Other new features have also leaked, including a new class, called spirit born which will have a nature theme plus a mercenary system for players to hire npcs outfit them with gear and level them up in a dedicated skill tree the ability to craft corrupt runestones and raid missions are also rumored you gonna buy the expansion john probably <laughs> if uh if there's new achievements with it i'll probably get it yeah because, I mean, how I did Diablo 3, I mean, I didn't even play it until, like, their, you know, Game of the Year, I forget what they called it, Game of the Year edition, like, came out. So, um, it'll be interesting to see, like, what's actually added. Usually, it's pretty significant, like, changes and updates, um, but... Yeah, it's yeah. uh I'm expecting like two to three like major expansions. But it coming to Steam has been the best thing because now they can data mine it and uh give us some leaks, which is always fun to just speculate about. But yeah, I'll probably be in there pretty quickly. I've been devouring season uh season two and Although I will say, once I hit level one hundred, I, I just stop playing. Like I haven't wanted to even get on. <laughs> so I'm like, oh no, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do now. You gotta uh, fight Duriel, king of maggots. Yeah. So anywho, have you done that yet? I started doing some of them. The Twitch app you never use on your Nintendo Switch is getting shut down. From the 6th of November, new users will no longer be able to download the app from the eShop. All users will then lose access from 31st 
of January 2024. So, well. All right. The beginning of the end for the Switch. I don't know how anyone could use it after losing this feature. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) Sniper bullets in Halo Infinite can be repulsed. Halo player Vito shared a crazy clip of him repulsing a sniper bullet in Halo Infinite and killing the guy who tried to snipe him. He said in a tweet, PSA, you could repulse sniper bullets in Halo Infinite and hit headshots. One of the hardest but sickest things I've done in a Halo game. It was so rewarding once it connected. Did you guys have, did you guys see yeah, this I clip? Was kind of under the assumption that like anything could be repulsed, but I thought I, I thought it was known that the sniper could, at least theoretically. I guess I don't know if it had just not been done yet, but I think like if I remember right, when Halo Infinite came out, people were talking about how you could. Mm. Yeah, but the odd like the odds of actually doing yeah, it exactly. in the game exactly and that's hitting saying, like, a the, headshot and hitting yeah the that, headshot that's the, is, that's like, the crazy part mind blowing to me yeah, yeah. that's why how, I mean how did it repul like did it re- like I watched the video but like it repulsed back like the same flight path. And the guy must have been standing exactly still from when he shot it. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think of like repulsing something, it goes, could go in like any direction or whatever. But um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Epic clip. Epic clip. New information about Resident Evil 9. Via Resident Evil Central, RE9 will have the biggest development budget out of any other games in the franchise. The earliest game will be released uh, in 2025, making it at least seven years in development. Resident Evil 9 will close some of the series threads while also opening new storylines that will take the series in a new direction. Henry, you play Resident Evil. You play it? Yeah, so, sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Seven years in development. Better be good. Yeah, I mean, the, the first really person liked... the first person Resident Evil game was too scary for me to play. I couldn't <laughs> RE seven, yeah. I didn't I didn't play RE seven too much. Like uh it seemed like Especially because my friends were all playing in like VR, like oh yeah, oof, and just like being at a party watching them like spaz out and uh, you know, as much as like horror and stuff like that. Like, see, it's kind of funny. I don't like horror video games a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, horror movies and and other stuff, but like. Horror video games because it's, it's a it's a very active uh, mm. activity, right? It's a very uh, very engaged versus like watching a horror movie. It's a passive like ride, you know. And I find a lot of art in like horror movies, and that's what I enjoy about like horror games too. But it is also like I do get scared playing horror games. It's it's very rare to get for me to like feel anxious or scared from a horror movie these days, but a horror game definitely can. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't played any of the RE games in a few, few years now. Um, I, I follow along with like the, what the plots and everything that's going on. Cause I find that really engaging, but the actual gameplay I haven't kept up yeah. with in a while. The movies are what are really good. <laughs> <laughs> they're good in a different way. I enjoy them, but like, you know, they're aware of what they are. That's what I like about the movies. The, they, first, they know what are, they the are. first Resident Evil movie I saw in theater, uh, I remember not like, I think it was the only one I've ever seen. I don't remember which one it was, but I remember they were fighting in a desert type area and there was a bunch of Is that extinction shipping crates. And I just remember the chick opened a shipping crate. And for the next 10 minutes, zombies began to pour out of the shipping crate 
like like so many more than could ever uh be yeah. be in yeah. the shipping crate they just kept pouring out pouring out it would cut to the shipping crate they're still running out and then she's fighting 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 cut to the shipping crate more pour out fighting 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 cut to the shipping crate more pour and i'm like dude there's no possible way there was <laughs> you know 800 <laughs> could fit in there but it then like yeah. the whole screen <laughs> is covered in all these zombies that just came out from this one shipping crate and i'm like okay i kind of get it now <laughs> funny yeah that was extinction there's yeah. a lot of them now there's so many of them I don't even know which one's which I don't keep up they're not that so good that they're one... not good enough for me to like keep track of if they're good enough to like watch for like the roller coaster ride and be like alright that was fine yeah but here's here's what I like is you know the roller coaster but then like this movie came out extinction came out in 2007 Runtime one hour thirty four minutes, <laughs> just like boom. Yeah, not I mean, none of this two two and a half hour drawn out mumbo jumbo. But just that's how that's how horror movies are though. Like a lot of horror movies, they they know they they need to just get you while they can, so they get they get you for ninety minutes, and yeah. uh, that's about average runtime for for a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. Horror movies and comedies, those are the two genres where it's like 90 minutes. That's like perfect, you know? Yep. So I heard someone say the other day that there hasn't been a really, really good comedy in a long time that's come out in theaters. And I've been hmm. thinking about that a it's lot. True. Just that's very sad. It's true. I think people are afraid to make jokes. It's not bad. It's that. Uh, com- I don't think it's. It's it's not that it's it's just the fact that like uh, because of streaming and because of lack of DVD sales, companies need to the movie studios are only doing movies that are going to be a certified blockbuster for the most part now. Mm, and right. so comedies were never that. So it's not a guaranteed like make all of our money back right now because we because before you would possibly make it up in DVD sales. Uh, mm. But now that that's gone. It's like, mm-hmm. no, we need to make our money back at the theater because there's no money on streaming in the reality because it's a, it's a, it's a subscription based service. So that's why we that don't see sense. mid budget movies. That's why we don't see comedies. We definitely don't see mid budget comedies. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Dr. Disrespect says he's open to streaming full time on X while streaming this week. Dr. Disrespect said if Elon Musk offered, he would help bring streaming to X platform. I think this would actually be a really good idea because I have streamed on X and it is, I mean, it's so, it has so far to go. I mean, YouTube already has challenges in the streaming game, let alone X who hasn't been doing it at all. And so his, his thing was, Hey, like I'll help bring it to what it could be and give it cool features and make it different. And I'm like, dude, honestly, you'd probably help him out a lot because Elon does not like streaming on X is not a viable option right now, but that would be a, that would be a pretty crazy move. If he threw some engineers at doc and they like worked on it, that would be, that could be really game changing potentially if they could pull it off. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be that would be awesome for X. Um, They'd be lucky. I think <laughs> I think Doc is is loaded enough too that he can afford to to take the hit and just mm. go over there and just build it as a streaming platform. Um, yeah, I mean, but if, yeah. From I was just gonna say from what I've seen, like X is like really tough to stream on and yeah um you know it's crazy to me too that youtube hasn't caught up to twitch or even like kick or something like it's just so real (laughs) streaming on youtube (laughs) yeah definitely nobody watches it's really weird like it's like like how the heck did YouTube was YouTube not able to just like it seems like such an easy sidestep for them to have pulled off, mm. you know? Yeah. 
It's yeah. already, it's like, oh, we already are, are, are a hosting site and we already have a video editor. Sure. Go live. Yeah. It, it's crazy because one of my biggest pet peeves, and I got to remind myself that like to be nice to people because people don't realize and they just, nobody knows about this stuff, but almost every time I stream, someone comes in Oh my gosh, you have 250,000 subscribers and there's only four people watching your stream? What, what's going on? And I'm just like, oh my God, please. Okay, first of all, that doesn't make me feel good. But second of all, it's like, dude, do you know what streaming on YouTube is like? Like, it doesn't, not every single person that I'm subscribed to gets a notification on their phone and says, hey, he's going live. That's not how it works. So, yeah. and furthermore, if they're subscribed to me, like if they go on their homepage, my thing isn't going to be the first thing they see, even if they are subscribed, they got to go to their subscribe button and do all this. So it's like, it's not easy and it's not accessible and it's not the easiest place to watch live streamers. Like if you go to your YouTube home right now and just go to youtube.com, you're logged into your account, you're at your, your home. Like, where do you go to see stream like channels that are live right now? I got home shorts, subscriptions, YouTube music. Um, I've got all of like my stuff, my channel, all of that. Then you scroll down, there's subscriptions, you can explore trending. And then there's like, oh, there's live down there. And yeah. Then it shows... And across the top, there's a live button too. If you see, it says all gaming music, like whatever your searches might be. Or well, whatever. this just shows me, this doesn't show me live stuff. It's just like recommended to me. Like I have like gaming, Halo Infinite. Oh, it doesn't so show me. Like... There's not one that says live because that's probably just based on what you. What you search search for, for. because I have a live button there, but yeah, exactly. You're to your point. I mean, it's it doesn't, yeah, only when you like go down to your subscriptions and you see, like, oh, Gordon Ramsay is live right now, that's the only time you're gonna do it. So it could be so much better, uh, in so many ways, but I don't know. Anyways, Doc, that I think that would be a smart move. If Elon is serious about turning X into a streaming platform, he does have to get someone over there who understands streaming. And I, I think yeah. actually him, he would be a good fit for Elon because they're both kind of crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and Doc's brand is like this futuristic. Uh, you know, he lo- He's like the futuristic '80s like sci-fi whatever type of vibe that's this whole thing so you know elon can work with that Ooh, mint blitz posted a video bungie is officially dead yikes it's a, it's the same stuff we just talked about yeah. like honestly like yeah it's there's i think literally everything he said we've already said yeah so yeah, i watched yeah. that earlier anything else for the good of the pod All right. I think that's it. GG's. Thanks for watching. We will see you all next week. Happy November. GG's. GG's. GG's.